I love when bureaucrats start doing math. Hey, I am Chuck the bureaucrat, and I gotta be honest, I have stayed away from the whole discussion of VA disability benefits, mainly because the math is bizarre and confusing. But I think I've figured out something that puts this whole idea of veteran disabilities into a fresh light. The way I'm gonna do this video is I'm gonna start by walking you through how the Department of Veterans Affairs does their math to combine disability ratings. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you an alternative way to do the math that gets the same result. Now, this alternative method is gonna lead us to a powerful interpretation of what the VA is doing. And by the time we're done, I think you'll agree that the word disability is misused here. All right, let's do this by the book. And when I say by the book, what I mean is Title 38 of the Code of Federal Regulations, Book C, Subpart A, Section 4.25, the Combined Ratings Table. You can find this exact same table and explanation on the VA website. In fact, they've even got a calculator that I'll show to you in a minute. But for now, let's go by the book. Suppose a person has two ratings, 30% and 50%. The first thing you do is you put them in order of severity. Step two, you're gonna read down the left-hand side of the table until you find 50%. And then, step three, you read across that row to where it intersects with 30%. See, you get 65%. Then, since this person only has two ratings, we do the final step, which is rounding, and the 65% rounds up to 70%. All right, now let's check this out on the official VA calculator. You got 50, 30, the actual combined value is 65%, and you get a final rating of 70. If we had a person with, say, 40 and 20% ratings, we come down the left side of the table to 40, over to the 20% column, the combined value is 52%, which rounds down to 50%. And then we'll just check ourselves on the calculator. Yep, that's right. Now, you have to ask, how'd they get the numbers that they put into the table? Well, they're not arbitrary. They follow a formula. And in fact, this is where you analysts are gonna recognize something familiar. Let's think back to that first example we had where there was a 30 and a 50% rating. And what I want you to do is think of all the jobs that exist in the world. Let's treat that 50% rating as the probability that that disability would interfere with 50% of all jobs and that the 30% disability would interfere with 30% of all jobs. Now, obviously, there's gonna be some jobs that aren't affected by either disability. Those are the leftover white space. And there's gonna be some jobs that are affected by both disabilities. And if you wanna know the odds that some random job is impacted by at least one of these disabilities, you use a principle that the statisticians call the inclusion-exclusion principle. You've got 50% plus 30% minus the product of 50% and 30%. And that gives you 65%. So you get the same answer that you get by following the by the book approach and by using the calculator on the VA website. And this isn't a fluke. This works for every single value in the table. Plus, this works for three or four disabilities, but it's not necessary to go through all the math. Heck, just use the calculator that's on the website. The point is that this starts to clarify what a VA disability really means. It measures the impact on all possible jobs, not necessarily the one that you hold. In fact, US code is specific that ratings are based on the average impairment of earning capacity resulting from the injuries. You see, these ratings are not a description of you. It's just a way for the VA to assign a certain amount of money to specific illnesses or injuries. In fact, this very issue shows up in one of the oldest known codes of law. Over 4,000 years ago, rulers were setting out to place a value on a foot or a nose or an arm, 
And now just looking at this table, you can see how quickly this system of laws could get out of hand. I mean, 4,000 years ago, it was easy to say a foot has a certain value. This earlier approach had the problem that you would have to assign a value to every single injury and illness that was possible. What if I lose my finger at the first knuckle? How about if I lose two fingers at the second knuckle? You can certainly imagine how bureaucracy would grow around that. And you can also imagine how there would be somebody who says, well, it's worth more to me if I count it as losing five fingers and half a hand instead of the whole arm. Therefore, I want to take it that Congress came up with a simpler way. Essentially, Congress created 10 levels of economic impairment and named them 10% through 100%. And then they set a dollar value for each one of those levels of economic impairment that has nothing to do with your personal financial situation or your abilities. In fact, they could just as easily have named these 10 levels of economic impairment Alpha through Kappa or Washington through Tyler for the first 10 presidents. And just like back in ancient Ur, where a rich man's foot had the same value as a poor man's foot, today Congress treats two people with the same disability rating exactly the same, even if they have different illnesses or injuries and regardless of its impact on their personal employment. In fact, the VA treats the whole issue of employability as completely separate from the issue of disability. But let me come back to this point. Congress set 10 levels of economic impairment that they label 10% through 100%. And all the crazy math, it's just a way to stay within those 10 buckets when you start combining ratings. But a 10% rating, a 70% rating, it's not a description of you. Heck, it's not even a description of the compensation. Because get this, if you have a final rating of 50%, you're only going to get 29% as much compensation as somebody with a 100% disability. Listen, don't let these ratings get into your head. Go out there and get some professional advice. And if you want to find out a quick and easy way to do it, check out this video.